Hi, my name is Gudrun from GE Designs. Welcome to my quarantine quilt along. Welcome everybody and thank you for being a part of this historical event. We have a quilt along involving folks from all over the world while the world goes through this crisis of um, most of us being quarantined to our houses or at least suggesting that we do. Now as quilters of course we self-medicate with quilting so what is better than being stuck in our house sometimes. But it is scary and of course very stressful time for many of us. So as we know, quilting heals. There's nothing better than being creative. It actually is scientifically proven that being creative reduces endorf or reduces, uh, makes endorphins in your body and releases endorphins, which is of course the best stress reliever ever. So uh, I'm so excited that you're here. We're gonna have a really fun, fun day. And let me tell you why this is historic. I don't know what's going to happen with our broadcast. We have so many people that are joining us. The number that have downloaded my Elvira pattern actually is 10,000 people. So 10,000 quilters will be sewing the Elvira quilt today. Maybe not today, maybe tomorrow. I know Australia is a little bit ahead, um, going to be, they're ahead of us in time, but they're going to be a little bit behind us in sewing. So I don't know what's going to happen with our live stream because as everybody experiences in their own homes these days is that all of your bandwidth and everything is slower with the internet because everybody's home and everybody's online. So hopefully now that we're pretty early here in the States, at least we can hang on. But I just wanted to put that out there. If we do break, if our bandwidth goes down and we disconnect. Do not worry, we are recording every episode, so I will keep going and then we will post after the fact, both on in the Facebook, on Facebook, on GE Designs, and then we're gonna post on YouTube afterwards. So you will see everything afterwards. Just wanted to throw that out there. <clears throat> so I wanted to thank you all for your great messages and post with the thank yous. There are so many that are alone, live alone, and are maybe pretty isolated at this time. And all of the thank yous are so much appreciated. Uh, but the best way to thank me and the folks that are gonna be joining me, the, the designers that are gonna be joining me, is actually spread the word. This is our business. And so of course, when you tell somebody that you had a good time or share our page or join our fa Facebook group, that is the best help um, that I, we can get. Because we are all of our, my business, I travel nonstop teaching all over the country and all of that has been shut down. So we are healing too and treating this as a therapy. But this is my favorite thing to do. I love bringing people together and have a fun time. So I designed this Elvira pattern to be something simple. Still doesn't really look that easy, but it's gonna be fast. And most of us are gonna finish today. So don't worry. And if you don't, it's not about that. It's about having fun, maybe learning a couple of new things and just envision that you are doing this with 10,000 people all over the world. I think that's pretty spectacular. So um, make sure to check in in the comments. I see a lot of you are doing that already. So tell us where you're joining in from, where you're watching from. Um, just love seeing, as I posted earlier, Europe has been up for a while, so I know you guys have been waiting. So hi everybody over in Europe. I know we have some people from all over Scandinavia and UK and um, I think Italy and Spain and it's just a beautiful thing bringing us all together. Um, and so of course, keep commenting, throw out questions, throw out just, just comments and, and um, you know, encouragements to people, say hi to everybody. And uh, we will have a random drawing for every session that we do. We will have a giveaway. So I'm, I'm treating you to a shopping spree in my online shop for $25 gift card in every session. So of course I wanted it to be a gift card so anybody can shop. I have a lot of digital products. So for those of you overseas, no shipping involved. You can use your gift and um, put it to use right away. 
So I have not only am I going to be bringing some designers on with me live to answer your questions and checking in with them because they are sewing along with us. So let me show you what famous faces are also sewing with us today. So of course, the extraordinary Bonnie Hunter is sewing. She's in Virginia and I didn't get a picture of her, but she was with me live last Tuesday and she showed us her fabrics then. So she is going to be making a quilt for her son and you, she scrounged some fat quarters out of her stash up at the cabin where she's sewing. So um, that's Bonnie. And then we have Terry Atkinson. She will be joining me later today. Terry Atkinson from Atkinson Designs. She's a fellow Minnesotan. So she is up and at it, I'm sure. And she's of course got her beautiful colorway of turquoise and corals and all kinds of fun fabrics I see. Um, and then we have in New York State, Debbie Brown. The amazing Debbie Brown, uh, machine quilter extraordinaire. So she already has some ideas on quilting our quilt, but she actually picked her fabrics last night and is going to be piecing with us too today. And we'll check in with her later on in the day. And then we have Jane Davidson and she's over in Australia. Uh, she's sound asleep right now. So she will be checking in with us in our last session at 5 p.m. Um, and it'll be very, very early Monday morning in Australia. So looking forward to that and hoping to connect with all of them. And then here in Minnesota as well is Celine Perkins from Perkins Dry Goods. Um, Celine is, has been designing for a long time. I've known her for a long time. And she designs on the Perkins Dry Goods, like I said. And she designed the amazing um, seam guide that I like to use to make sure that my quarter inch seam allowance is perfect and all of my students in my classes. And then we have over in Virginia, I believe, Pat Sloan. She is sewing, and look at that yummy fabrics that she has picked out, reds and blacks and white. We have Carrie Carr from New Leaf Stitches. She has picked some beautiful fabrics. I believe this is from her own fabrics, fabric line that she designed. She's a fellow Minnesotan as well. And um, she's actually positioned in front of a quilt that we actually did together. We did a round robin. So Terry Atkinson was a part of that project as well. Um, then we have Nancy Scott from Masterpiece Quilting. She's picked some beautiful fabrics and I love that bright quilt in the background. We have Kim Lepasek over in Wisconsin. Kim is the coolest chick on the block and she also owns a apple orchard and she was throwing out some mimosa recipes to me last night so we'll be definitely talking about those later on we have susan knapp over in illinois she is from the quilt branch and look at that she's got the patriotic um, colors going and my matching quilt in the background beautiful thing and then another fellow minnesotan carla overland from cherrywood hand dyed fabrics her quilt is going to be colorful, you b believe me. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing all those quilts and thank you all fellow designers to be joining in with me. I can't, can't wait to see everybody's quilt. So now <clears throat> let's get started on our demonstration. So I hope you have all had printed out your pattern. Now there was of course, always when we have a last minute project like this, just a few little things. You might have noticed on your pattern that um, the cutting instructions for the binding got kind of cut off. Don't worry, I have fixed that. And so since you all went through the process of uh, getting your pattern through GE Designs, and if you set up an account, you can always sign into your account and download a pattern again or download or look at it again. So I have adjusted it. So now there's a new file up there. So if you wanna go ahead after the fact and print it out with the new, new um, binding cutting instructions, it is all there. So um, we are gonna get started on cutting the fat quarters. So I will be showing you at first how to use it, how to cut your fat quarters uh, with the Stripology XL ruler. And then moving on, I'll be showing you all the different tools that we can use for, for these things. So we're gonna start with our fat quarters. So I know many of you have probably started and already cut your back fat quarters. So I'm gonna be sewing out of these awesome Halloween fabrics. So when cutting with the Stripology ruler, you want to fold your fat quarters in half lengthwise because we're going to be cutting across. We want to get the long strips. So at, according to the pattern, we'll be cutting a seven, two seven and a half inch strips and then a two inch strip. So 
I take my selvage, making sure that you fold it the right way. So I take my selvage and I fold it towards the cut edge of the fat quarter. And I'm just gonna stack a few. And what I do when I'm cutting multiples with my ruler, I actually stack them so I can see a little bit of the fold of each fat quarter. Because to get our strips to be straight, we wanna make sure that this fold is aligned with a line on the ruler. So I'm gonna cut three at a time. So you can use either 45 millimeter cutters or the big 60. I wouldn't recommend more than six layers of fabric with the 45. So now I bring my ruler over and I am going to align one of the horizontal lines with a bottom fold. And then I'm gonna start making my cuts. So I have actually just marked them with my ruler stickers because whenever I'm doing a lot of the same cuts, this is really gonna help me eliminate some cutting mistakes and just keep me in line. And also I don't really have to think about it. So I'm gonna cut through the zero. If you're right-handed, just make sure you put two fingers on that little lip. The ruler is not gonna move because it has the grip on the whole back side. And then I'm gonna cut on the seven and a half and the 15 and the 17. So this is all we need for from the fat quarters. This, the seven and a half inch strips, what I say in the pattern that you cut seven and a half by 21. So most of our fat quarters are about 21 inch long. So you don't need to cut it into 21, just cut them from the width of the fat quarter and we're gonna leave them like this. The two inch strip is going to be subcut into 10 inch rectangles. So I just, I like to put, stack my strips up so that the selvage is on the left side because then I can trim that off and then I make stacks. So you can stack them up however many you want. And then I bring my ruler over, aligning any line on the bottom of the strip. And you can have multiple stacks and just subcut all of your two inch strips at the same time. I cut through the zero, the 10 and the 20. And now I have my rectangles ready to go. Now, a lot of questions have been about using directional fabrics. And actually in my, this uh, line of fabric that I'm using, there was a lot of directional fabric. So here's one of them. And of course I wanted my blocks to look like this with direction. So there's a few things. So I, I wanted to talk about one thing too. If you're using stripes, so for example, this was a striped fabric and it's little spiders coming down. So most people would just use it, you know, cut it this way so that the spiders will be going one way. So I have this fabric and a couple of other colors in, in the ones that I'm using. So I decided with this particular one that I wanted to cut it this way because when you step away from the quilt, you don't really see that the spiders are going straight down. It's really kind of gonna read as a stripe. And I love to use stripes go in all kinds of directions in my quilt because I feel like it just gives it more life and kind of movement. So now I'm gonna set these aside. So, but if you wanted to cut um, directional, so all you would have to do because our blocks are so long, there will be, need to be one little seam in your, in your uh, block, but that is all okay. I mean, I always talk, about, talk to people that are a little bit nervous about that. And uh, I say, you know, this is what we do. We cut up fabric and we sew it back together. So who cares if there's an extra seam or two in our quilt? Nobody will notice once it's quilted and uh, it's all gonna be good. Now, if you are still really nervous about that, having a seam in your block, then I just recommend not using directional fabrics or uh, maybe start with larger pieces. So get, um, get ha uh, what I was gonna say, get two thirds of a yard or something like that. So you can really cut it long, the long way. All right, so here I have it. So now I have my uh, fat quarter folded the other way. So you'll see that it's longer because I folded the other way, not the long way. And I have just a aligned, uh, make sure that I, that first cut is gonna cut off my selvage. So I'm just gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna cut through the, zero and then the seven and a half and then the 15 and i'm going to cut just one two inch strip um, most likely you don't you won't have a whole lot of fabrics that are this way 
So I am going to do this and just have one strip. So you, you will only get one rectangle out of here, but don't worry because we have some extra. So if you have only just a few directional fabrics, it'll still be just fine. So now I have these, but these are going to be too short because we're going to have to subcut our units to 20 and a half. So here's what I do with the rest of it. So here is my, my unit um, that I have left and I'm just going to cut that into, um, about three inch, so I need just about three inches that I need to add on to this. So three to three and a half inch units, and we're gonna have to piece them. So I just cut through the zero, and then um, three and a half, seven, ten and a half, and 14, and you have a little extra. So what you will need to do is, first off, sew these two guys together, and then you're gonna have to sew them to the top or the bottom of these long units and do all that before you then trim this to 20 and a half. All right, does that make sense to everybody? I know this is a couple of extra seam that's gonna be on your block, but don't worry. I'm gonna show you here behind me. I actually did that with one of my fabrics here in the quilt that's hanging behind me. So it's in this fabric. I'm gonna see if we can find it somewhere. Oh, here, here we can see it. So there is a seam up there, but stepping this far away, you really can't tell. And once it's quilted, I wouldn't worry about it. All right, so now we're gonna move on. You got your fat quarters all cut into the seven and a half inch, two strips, and then you got your two inch strips cut into your 10 inch rectangles. So now we're gonna move on to uh, in the pattern and move on to the step where we're gonna trim it. So this is the first diagram here. So I'm gonna start with, I'm just gonna show one at a time. So this is how I like to do my, um, using this, the stripology ruler. So because we're cutting, trimming these to 20 and a half. Now, if you have a stripology ruler, it works the same way with the uh, large one or this XL. So the first slit is at zero, the last slit is at 20. So how are we gonna do this? Well, with the stripology ruler, uh, the little lips on each side are exactly an inch. So what I do, I align, align on the bottom of my um, rectangles. I'm gonna cut through the zero and remove the selvages. And then I'm gonna slide the ruler over until the edge of the fabric is aligned with the edge of the ruler. And now I'm gonna make a cut on the 19 and a half because 19 and a half plus an inch is of course 20 and a half. So I have a little blue arrow, different color to mark that for me. So when I do all of my cutting, I'm good to go. So now I have this into a 20 and a half inch rectangles. So that you need to do with all of your um, units. <clears throat> and I actually like to do it as I explained in the pattern, we're gonna start with block one. So you're gonna pull all your rectangles that you wanna use for block one. There's different numbers for different sizes. So pick the ones that you, you like uh, for the lap size that I'm making. I just picked 16 different, or 16 rectangles, don't have to be different, just any 16 rectangles. And then I like to do, trim them all. And then, uh, cause it's one foul swoop, I'm gonna cut them apart. So I'm gonna turn my rectangle so it's kind of diagonal on my cutting mat. I'm gonna use my big ruler first, show it with the big ruler first. So um, you have a 60 degree line on the ruler that I'm gonna align with the bottom of the rectangle. And I'm gonna make sure that the, the, the corner on the bottom left is gonna be aligned with the zero slit like this. And then we're gonna make one cut. So I'm gonna use my green arrow. I've got three colors going on. And I mark that on the seven inch slit. That is where I'm gonna cut through the whole, st whole stack. So through the seven inch slit. And this is for block A. And so here we are. I'm just gonna stack that, these guys on top of each other. And just know this, that these will not be exactly, might not be exactly the same size very similar, but it's not a big deal. So here is where we can use our trimmer that I talked about, which is my 
point trimmers. They come in a pack of three and we're going to be using the 60 degree one. And you can use any kind of 60 degree ruler as well for that. And we're just going to align this with the tip here and trim off our little points. So once I do this, now I'm going to show you how to do this diagonal cut with the or original stripology ruler. So it will work the same way, but when you do that diagonal cut, the original ruler is shorter than the XL. So when you do that for cut, if you're going to do it diagonally, you don't have room to do it. So I actually just do a little bit of maneuvering. So first these guys need to go into 20, 20 and a half. So I'm going to do that real quick so we can, I can show you all the different methods that we're going to use. I'm going to ask my producer to get me a pen. I need a pen. Thank you. So first off, I'm just going to trim off the salvages and then slide it over and cut it into nine on the 19 and a half. So there I have all my 20 and a half. So I'm going to set these over here and just grab one just to show you with the stripology ruler, the original. So it also has a 60 degree line, but as you can see, if I line it up and I'm going to cut through the seven, I'm going to use this arrow here. Um, if I'm going to cut through the seven, it's not going to make it. So what I do, I kind of extend it because we don't need to have it here down on the zero. I'm going to just move this up. And so my zero point will be down at the edge of the ruler, which is exactly two inches down from where my point is to be in the pattern. So to make sure that this is positioned right, I actually just follow my 60 degree line and see where the 60 degree line crosses a horizontal line. So I know I see here it crosses, it's kind of between the 15 and a half and 16 inch slit where it crosses. So I just go down from there one, two inches, put a little arrow there, and that's where I need to align the bottom of my fabric. So now I know this angle is perfectly correct, and I can make my cut through the seven. And it makes it all the way through. So a little tip for you, you guys that have the original ruler. So now I'm gonna show you if you don't have either ruler, and you can still easily do this. So we're going to grab one of these. <clears throat> so with a regular ruler, we are going to just mark from the bottom left corner, eight inches from the edge. So here, this one mark. Now, if you have a 60 degree triangle ruler, which you can use these creative grids ones, they're in two sizes or any kind of angle that has a 60 degree. You can use that. We're going to be cutting it this way. So you're going to turn your ruler this way. So you can just align the edge of the ruler with that marked spot. And it's nice because it has diac or horizontal lines that I can line up and make sure it's straight and you can cut it this way. Okay. If you have a ruler that has a 60 degree line on it, this any uh, straight ruler you can do that same thing now this particular ruler only has it going this way so it, if i align this with the bottom it's going to be the wrong angle for me so but what we can do a little trickeration is flip it over and still use that line it's just one cut we're going to do so align that 60 degree line on the bottom of this of the rectangle the edge is right by my mark and then you can cut it apart this way so what if you don't have any of this? You don't have a 60 degree line. You don't have a 60 degree triangle or anything. Here's what you're going to do. We did it and mark here eight inches from the edge this way. And we're going to do the same thing on the top. So eight inches from the top, from the right side, we're going to put a mark. And so this way you can just take uh, any straight ruler. For example, if you have the squared, ruler or just any ruler. We're just going to use the edge of it and align the edge of the ruler with the two marks. So if you are doing this technique, 
just know that your angle might be just a little bit slightly different than a perfect 60 degree, but don't worry about that. You can still fully make the quilt and I will show you exactly the little adjustments that you can do. So now we have these cut apart and the next step we have to cut is our parallelograms. That is the bits that go in between our cut apart rectangles. So we're gonna take our 10 inch cut. So the 10 uh, or the 16 for the lap size. So the amount of rectangles that you picked for your blocks, you just pick same amount of um, rectangles that you're gonna use for the parallelograms. And I'm gonna show you different ways how you can cut, that, cut those. Um, and I just picked the same fabric so I know I can swap them around. So this, if you have the Stripology XL ruler, we're actually gonna be making sure that all the fabrics are right side up. So that is actually noted in the pattern whenever you're cutting anything at an angle, make sure they're all right side up so you get all, all of them at the same, going the same way. So we're gonna uh, angle it differently, uh, the opposite way, because now we're gonna be using the 60 degree line that goes from the top and down. And so we're just gonna align that top left corner with the zero slit, and the line goes diagonally down. And these are gonna get cut into seven and a half so you cut through the zero, and then you cut through the seven and a half. All right, now if you have the original Stripology ruler, you can do the same way even though you don't have that top line. So let me show you that. You're gonna actually just use the bottom line, but you're gonna flip your fabrics over. So you're gonna make sure that you have the wrong side up using that bottom 60 degree line and then make a cut on the zero and the seven and a half. And there's your parallelogram. Now, if you have none of these and still would like to cut um, parallelograms, you can do the same thing with regular rulers. So you can just take a parallelogram. Now this is the A blocks your parallelograms need to be slanted this way. So um, you're gonna have to do uh, the first cut. You will just kind of make the angle correct. So I'm gonna just cut the angle this way. And then if you have any, any kind of ruler, you can measure seven and a half inches this way. And I'm just gonna use, oops, I'm gonna use my squared ruler. So I like to just, have that cut edge on the bottom and then I'm using my squared. Now this is an inch just like the other rulers so I know where there's zero that really means one. So I'm gonna align the six and a half inch slit on the bottom of that cut and then cut on the edge of the fabric. Oh that's the six, sorry I need to do six and a half. Six and a half, good. So then I just cut on the edge of the ruler and you can do this with any ruler that has is big enough to do that. So now I have this. If you don't have any of these 60 degree tools, then I just recommend that you leave your rectangles just like this. You're not going to cut them into parallelograms. Okay. So the parallelograms, if you did cut them and if you have a, the trimmers or, or a 60 degree triangle ruler with a flat tip like these guys then we're gonna trim these little corners off as well like that we're gonna turn it over and um, there we are so now I'm gonna talk about how we put that block A together and with also some options for you depending on the tools that you have. So we're gonna start with, if you have cut your parallelograms from, okay, where are my units? There they are. So if you have cut your units with a stripology ruler and then you have all of your points trimmed off, so you have a top and a bottom to your uh, block here. 
So you're gonna just pick one of the, um, the contrasting ones. I like to have a contrast. Now, a lot of you probably wanna, uh, we're planning on cutting this from a separate fabric, and that's totally fine. You would just cut two inch strips, cut them into the 10 inch rectangles and go from there. So here we are. When we have the points trimmed off, this is what makes this so beautiful, is that when you place this onto sew here, this edge here will just align perfectly. So you don't have to guess how much your little uh, trim or dog ear is supposed to stick out because this will fit here perfectly. I always recommend putting a couple of pins in because this bottom fabric is going to be, is on the bias. This is cut on the bias. However, these strips are not on the bias. So you pin this on and then we're gonna sew this and make sure that you always, when you're sewing one bias edge, I always use this rule, B-O-B, -B, bias on the bottom. So the top fabric is the one that's not biased, so it will keep the other one stable. So you're gonna sew a quarter inch from here, and then we're gonna press. So you're pressing towards that little strip. And always when we're pressing, you wanna first Fold the fabric out, push that seam out, and then just go follow uh, over it with your iron. So now, once this is sewn on, it's time to sew the top part to the, the bottom part. And again, when you lay this on, this will fit perfectly edge to edge when you have trimmed your points off. And again, put a couple of pins in, but then flip it over and sew it this way, so your bias is on the bottom. B-O-B. -B. It's not B-Y-O-B, -B, but it's B-O-B. <laughs> All right, so that is if you have your trend points, but I wanna show you if you have, if you have um, just rectangles. So if you just cut your pieces apart and you don't have a trimmer or anything like that, and um, so you're just gonna be using the rectangles. So what we're gonna do here, I'm gonna make some room so I can show you this really up close. So, because the positioning is um, important. So this is gonna get sewn like this. So we want to flip it over. I'm gonna show you here. So hard to see that gray fabric, but here's my corner, here's my corner. Uh, my corner right here. So what you want for this rectangle is just let it stick out just a little bit. So I'm gonna show you right here, just very, very little because your seam is gonna start here and then it's gonna stick up more on the other side. So I'm gonna just keep, gonna position it and put a little pin in there and show you in the overhead so that you can kind of see it when it's laying down like this. So see how it's just overlapping just a little bit here. It looks weird, but when it presses out, it's gonna it's gonna make sense because then once you sew and press, it's gonna look like this. So now you're just gonna trim this. It's very important to do the trimming before adding the top part because if you add the top part now, you don't know where to position it. So I just use a regular ruler. You can align it with the edge of the block and make a cut on each side. If you have a stripology squared ruler, for example, you can actually use that and just position it, the edge of this fabric on the zero, and then this will be on the seven and a half, of course, so you can just bring this down and make a cut on the seven and a half. You would make a cut on the zero on the seven and a half, so one, one false swoop, get it done. So now you have this, and you do have a tip here. And so if you do ha don't have any trimmer, this is where you have to do a little eyeball to figure out how much of this is gonna stick out. So you wanna have that little dog ear stick out a little bit. So let me show you up closest again. So just about a quarter of an inch, I would say, you have a little triangle, a little tiny little 60 degree triangle. See that? And that is the right positioning You'll have that on each side, so the triangle should be sticking out equally on each side. Like that. You put a pin in, 
couple or three or however you many you want you want to flip it over before you sew and then again we're going to press so once we are done with that we have our a blocks that look like this now there's one more little step and that is we're going to trim this to make sure that all of our blocks end up the right size or the same size. They, we're going to trim them to 21 and a half. So if you have just a large ruler, that's easy to do. And the thing is, it should be just a little sliver. So measure your blocks first. If you don't have a large ruler like that, you probably have a cutting mat that is exactly that. So you can always just use the lines on your cutting mat because even though we sometimes don't want to trust cutting mat lines to be accurate, but this, all that this does is we want to make sure all our blocks are the same size. So as long as you use the same measurements, it should all be good. So now I have my block here and I'm going to use my XL just to show you. So 21 and a half, that's going to be an odd measurement for um, the ruler because we have 20 slits and then 21, 22 on the edges, but there are no slits in the edges. So um, on the XL, we have quarter inch lines on each side going um, out from the last slit. So I just lay this on top. I have my fabric on the edge here and I see that I'm about an eighth of an inch larger than 21 and a half. So what I do is I slide my ruler over to the left so that uh, on this side, I'm just gonna get a really little, tiny little sliver of a trim and so I can move, remove that. So it's very, very little. And then I'm going to use the second dotted line out down from the zero because that's adding a half inch. So that's adding a half inch. So I line my fabric with that dotted line. And then I'm going to be cutting on the edge because that is 21. So I make my little cut here. I get another little sliver and that is my 21 and a half inch. A block. So that is the demo. Did I miss anything you think? So please, please ask any questions. I hope this, this was all good. Um, uh, Paula says, I really appreciate all the different tools. So if I am too fast to follow, just know that you can always go back to this. When we go offline, we can always go back to this video and watch it all again. So I thought the first video was just the cut. Yeah, so I, like I said, I'm the cutting, you can start with that. And when we go back live at 11, I'm gonna show you how we do block B, but I totally understand that you might still be cutting then. It's just how we wanna space out our demos. All right, um, if you, like I said, if you're lost and too fast, just go back and watch it, no problem. All right, so do we have any other question? Any questions? Um, all right, so Faye says that she thinks she can use her easy angle ruler. So just make sure it's a 60 degree. But like I said, if you are not sure, just use your regular rulers and do those markings and cut them apart and use the rectangles. Easy, easy. <clears throat> all right, so, all right, lots of comments about the fabrics. All right, so this, uh, a lot of people stress that I'm going too fast, but just know that you're not supposed to follow me. This is my demo and then you go do it, okay? So just go back and watch it however many times you need. And then if you think of questions, when I come back at, at 11 central time, pop those questions in once we are kind of doing the, the um, ticking down of the time until we go live, that's when you can start posting questions. And also after the video in between my sessions, I will be going through all of your comments to answer all your questions. So don't worry. Um, the, Linda says the pattern says to start with 21 inch strips. Oh, I missed, um, I missed it. So the comments come in so, to, too fast. Uh, yes, the 20, but like I said in the beginning, when you're cutting a fat quarter, they're usually about 21 inch long. So don't trim it to 21 first. You just cut the width of the, the fat quarter and then you'll have approximately a 21 inch strip. All right, uh, Lori says, great demo. Thank you, already learned lots of great tips this morning. That's great. Now, I just wanted to check and see how many of you are watching live. We have uh, 3,700 folks 
on live with us and I think we're still strong. It might be kind of spotty if, you're, if your uh, internet is kind of choppy, it's understandable. Depends on where you are in the world, but we are still going strong, so that's a good thing. It's a good thing. Um, so Stacy asked, how long until we'll be on YouTube? Uh, it will take us a little time to render the video and then upload it, so just bear with us. We said about at least an, like an hour uh, is my guess, maybe earlier, but it'll stay on the Facebook, so make sure if you want to watch it right away, as soon as we click off, you can go into on GE Designs, Facebook page, not the crew, not the group, but GE Designs Facebook page, go to videos and it'll be there. All right. Um, okay, so uh, any other question? How many block A are we supposed to make? It depends on your size. So just go back to your pattern and, and read how many you should pull because the rectangle, we're gonna have more rectangles than we are gonna have blocks because we use those rectangles to make the setting um, setting uh, rectangles as well. So that's going to be later. All right. Great demo. Thank you. Where do you put the markings? Um, Dor Doris is asking, where do you put the markings? I'm not sure which markings you're, you're referring to. I put the stickers wherever I need to make a cut. Um, the ones that I was doing on the original stripology ruler, you, I just put them two inches down from the 60 degree line so I can just use the arrows instead of the line. <clears throat> Going forward, can you add page numbers to the patterns? Well, um, if you've ever had my printed patterns, you maybe know that I, my printed patterns come on one sheet of paper. You fold them out so you never lose a page. So that was just um, with the PDFs and you print it, then we have to break it down. But that's a good point. I can easily add that. But you can also easily add page numbers yourself. Um, my fat quarters are slightly narrower, can only cut them to 20 inches. So should I adjust the angle cut? Actually, Becky, I wouldn't necessarily adjust the angle cut. It's, I mean, a quarter inch in increment on an angle cut is, is not, really nothing. And especially with this pattern, when we put everything together, nothing matches. So I would just still do it on the eight. You'll just have a little bit shorter. It's a half an inch. Nobody's not going to notice it. Um, Debbie says, do, do this cutting to every fat quarter. Yes, yeah, so your fat quarters, all of them should be cut into two seven and a half inch strips and a two inch strip. Uh, Cindy says suggestions on selecting colors for blocks so you get variety. So you can, because your uh, fat quarters are all mixed up anyway, and so just um, since you're getting two strips from each, I would just pull almost one of each for block A and then uh, one of the others from block B, but of course there's, there's always a little bit more because we need it for the setting rectangle. So just mix it up because once we start playing with it, it's going to get mixed up. All right. How can I use the new Creative Grids ruler to cut the block? Um, are, are you talking about the Excel ruler? I just showed you all of that. That's the newest stripology ruler. Um, thank you, Nicole says. Thank you so much for this. You're doing a fabulous job. Whew, I can, uh, I have barely taken a breath, but I am gonna look through all your questions and I will type all the answers if, uh, if there's anything specific, but it, a lot of these questions I'm seeing is something that I already talked about earlier in the video. So please go back and watch it, but I think it's time to celebrate. I think this is the biggest number of people we've ever had live. And so thinking about the fact that we're gonna have 10,000 Elvira quilts, probably at least by the end of the week. So it's time to celebrate. So I have my bubbly, so I think, it's early here, but it's not early in uh, Europe. So I'm gonna just pretend I'm in Iceland, which is my home country. So it's, what is it? Almost three o'clock there? Happy hour time, right? So I am gonna make a simple mimosa, which my favorite mimosa is, uh, I have in here just a little bit of orange liqueur. My favorite is actually Patron orange liqueur, just like a it just it depends. It's, it will add a little punch to your mimosa. So you can put a half ounce or a full ounce, depending on what you feel you need. Um, I put a little bit of pineapple juice and a little bit of orange juice. Now, mimosas are so great because you can adjust the juice however much you want. If you like them sweeter with more juice, you can add more juice. You can use sparkling cider. You can use just sparkling water instead of um, champagne if you want an alcohol-free mimosa, but it's just a great sunny uh, way to start the day. So 
let me just pour these and toast to all of you and thank you all for being here. I had to, of course, make two, um, one for Mr. Honey, Mr. Producer. So everybody give him a shout out. He's kind of sweating over there, hoping that our internet stays and so far so good. So I'm very excited about that. So here we are. Cheers, everybody. So uh, let's have a really fun day. I hope you downloaded the playlist. I'm gonna crank it up and um, check out all your questions. So here he is. Cheers. All right, so I will see you back in uh, an hour and 15 minutes and we will check in with Bonnie Hunter and see how she is doing. And everybody just keep smiling and let's make some blocks. Cheers. Mm -hmm.